Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today on the bench is a E-Machines E1. Those all-in-one iMac look-alike machines that they got sued over. Power supply. Now, I don't own the machine. This one was sent in to me for repair. And the symptom is it's completely dead. It doesn't turn on at all. It doesn't work. Shows no signs of life. It's just dead to this world. Now... What the first thing I do, I've never worked on one of these, but I've worked on many power supplies. So the first thing I do is I typically just go over it and just observe sight, sound, smell, critical thinking, that kind of thing. So basically what I do is I want to take a look at this and just kind of stare at it for a minute and get an overview of the design. Right, I just want to see how this thing is designed, which components are involved, which part does what, you know, and I form all of these connections in my mind of how this power supply works. And the first thing I've noticed right away is there's two main power supplies. Likely because it's an all-in-one machine, we've got the computer side of the power supply, and we have the analog board monitor side of the power supply with other little various things here and there probably a standby voltage regulator as well you know just things like that right now this harness appears to be an atx style molex connector whether it's the actual atx pinout i don't know right the other thing i like to do is i like to look at the board and see okay well is there any physical damage is there anything physically blown any caps with the tops blown off? Is there any components burnt or scorched or anything like that? And then if, if the fuse is blown and stuff like that, it's just it's just looking for leads. We just need a lead to go on, which I don't really see any of that. And the other thing I like to do is to take a look at the bottom side and look for the same thing. Do we have any fried traces? Do we have any? bad solder joints do we have any burn marks and stuff like that and then we can see a little bit here we can see areas of the board where things have been hot right and those are areas i like to check and then the other thing i like to check is bad solder joints and there's not a, a lot but there are a few and the first thing I noticed right away is the ATX connector. And you can see the solder joints on that connector are just busted. They're, they're junk. Okay, so we have that going for us. But I think, I think that problem is secondary. Because that wouldn't stop the whole machine from turning on. It would try to run and not. Or it wouldn't post or turn on, shut off, whatever. But it's not even doing anything. So, and if we look at the labeling on here, we have PS on. So that's the power supply on signal. We should have a standby signal too, which, yeah, there it is right there. And that's broke. So, yeah, it's possible that's why it's not turning on, because we've got a missing standby voltage. Because, the you know, it's broken. Um, the original owner did say he tried an ATX power supply and it wouldn't turn on either. Um, I'm concerned, because I'm going to have to check this pin out against an ATX connector, because if this is different it, yeah that's why um anyway so i'm looking at this board even more and i see that but it's like well i need to what i have to do is in order, in order to test this board since i don't have the rest of the machine is i have to replicate the conditions that this board would have experienced right so let's see what does it take to turn this on well we have a power on signal well, where does that go? So we chase that around, it jumps over, and comes around, comes down, and ends up over here. So it literally goes right back out this connector, and this connector goes to the analog board. So I don't have that. So if I jump this out, this board's not going to do anything, because it just goes right down here. But we have this uh, PC power signal right there, so it's possible it goes out to the analog board, the analog board does some things and then it comes back in here. And it could simply be a safety interlock where if the analog board is not plugged in, the power supply is not going to come on, right? I I'm just guessing. So it's possible this is just looped back in. You know, I don't see any other standby voltages that I can tell. Uh, I'll have to double verify because 
I'm looking at the Sitsi standby. I follow that down, goes over this jumper link, into this capacitor, and into this inductor. This inductor also has a, a diode on it as well, so this 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 could be the standby regulator here. These two are grounded. This is just an inductor. We have a diode off of this inductor which comes off of this IC. So this is probably like a buck converter. I'm going to assume. And that buck converter is powered off of this main power supply. So this power supply, this section of the power supply looks like it runs all the time. Regardless. And because it would have to because we've got this converter here that has to run to provide standby power to the the power supply going out to the motherboard which engages this power on signal which goes out to the monitor which makes sense because that means these voltages are going to be hot all the time I'm assuming at this point now I'm making a lot of assumptions early in the video so I could be wrong but uh, I'm assuming these are going to be hot all the time and that goes out to the analog boards the analog board has power so when you press the power button it tells the analog board to come on because it sends a signal this way and the analog board comes on and sends a signal back up to over here if you follow this trace it goes up over here to this supply which turns this one on but we don't have anything at all not even a glimpse of even trying to get power so we're probably missing voltages over here Potentially, or it could just it be as stupid and easy as this bad solder joint. I don't know. But I'm just going to take an approach and methodically go through this and test everything because I see some heat scorches of potential concern and stuff like that, which this could be normal, especially if it's on 24-7, even with the computer in standby. So I just want to check everything. So what I'm going to do is, and I want to do this more for educational purposes for you all to follow along to know what I go through when I troubleshoot these boards. Okay, especially unknown boards with no schematics or anything. So I'm going to switch to the overhead camera, which has a much lower audio quality and picture quality. So bear with me because I want you to see what's going on with the, um, the setup. I want to grab my handheld multimeter so you can actually see what I'm testing as well. So let me get the camera view switched. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing I like to do when working on power supplies is, you can see the meter right here, because you can't see this one, so I shut that one off. Make sure we're good, and we are. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start checking diodes, and I want to start down here first. So we'll check this one. It's fine. We'll check you. It's fine. 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 That's okay. Let's check it the other way. That's concerning. But we'll, that may not necessarily be a bad thing. It depends on the circuit. So let's keep going. Check you. Fine. And you're going to start reading through capacitors, but that's fine. So that's fine. Okay. So that looks good. Let's check you. Fine. Um, now we're going to go up. We've got some of these TO220 style ones like here. Let's check you. That seems a bit suspect. But that may actually be normal. Because again, there could be load resistors on there. Because that's the other thing I want to make a, a statement of too is switching power supplies especially when it comes to the feedback going through our auto isolated and coming back around to keep it stable you have to keep the loop stable to keep the loop stable you got to have somewhat of a load that way because if the a target object has a light load this thing will it'll start to become unstable because without a load resistors to keep everything stable if you ever worked on a switching power supply and you hear it go tick 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 trying to start well that's why because it's got to keep because what happens is it'll start the over voltage will sh the voltage will shoot all the way up because there's not enough load and it will fall back down because it goes into over voltage protection so it goes zoop 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 and it does that repetitively as the capacitor inside the controller 
charges and discharges, charges and discharges to get past the, the recycle, the cycle time. So it'll just go tick, 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 tick until the load is satisfied. It'll do the same thing in overcurrent protection too. So if there's a short on the secondary, it'll do exactly the same thing. It'll just be a lot louder because if there's a heavy load, it'll make more of a chirp noise, like a chirp, 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 trying to start up. So yeah, just things like that. You have to, it's that sight, sound, smell thing that I'm talking about. So anyways, um, you are kind of sus suspect, but it's not that low because normally it's short, you get 0 0.000. So I'm just curious what the value of that resistor is. Fifty-five ohms. Now, which rail is that on? So this should be ground, which will go over here. I'm sure. Yep, it is. So I'll use you as ground. Let's see, because here's 3.3 volts. Yeah, that's the 3.3 volt supply. Five volt. Uh, five volt. We're getting very similar readings. So it's probably normal. Minus 12 volt, and that's about right. Positive 12 volts. And of course, ground's ground. There's our standby, which we've checked before. That seems to be okay. So, yeah, I'm getting low impedances, but again, it could be a red herring. Just like down here. That could be a red herring. So, now what I do to verify things like that, it's like, okay, well, how about if I take ground and I chase this so we have well we've got resistors here we've got all kinds of things here so we go yeah see what I mean that's ground we've got a resistor right across there well let's see what is that resistor can't tell because it's under the transformer looks like a 68 ohm so there you go. There, there, that's why. All right. So that is good. That's normal. So don't let yourself get to fall in those those red herrings. So chances are we're going to be okay on the secondary side of this guy. Okay. So we don't. We know we don't have a bad primary fuse. So this is the other one I want to check. I want to check over here too because I got. And this looks like it's been hot. So here's a key difference. None of this stuff looks like it's been hot this does right you've got two points here that one which appears to be okay and then we have this one all right so again let's chase the circuit and see if there's a load resistor so this side's going to be zero because you're reading through the transformer this side's going to be you know that point one which is if i measure the impedance of that or resistance i should say it's about 120 ohms exactly so that really does sound like a load resistor it really does so i'm sure there's one somewhere uh okay so we have a cap here we check that cap that's we're getting the same thing but we also have a resistor across here so we measure that 21 ohms but notice It's higher on this side of the resistor than this side of the resistor. So that is likely not our problem. Plus we have a capacitor right here. Eh, it could be shorted. Anything's possible. But it's highly unlikely. So that's not my path for the load. So we go down here. We follow this trace all the way down. Oh, we got a resistor here. Nope, that's not my path for the load. So we got two points there. Here's a jumper link. So we have that, but then we have a resistor here. Nope, that's not my point. So we go over here, we have another cap there. We have another resistor going to ground. So if I go from here to ground, it's ground. So we're going to get the same reading, same 120 ohm reading. Just like that. So let's see. Let's go take a look. Now we have the resistor right here. You can see the color bands, possibly. Uh, it is red, yellow, orange. So that is not 120 ohms. So that is concerning. I'm not seeing a load resistor anywhere in this circuit. So that actually might be faulty. 
which could explain why I've got no power because if this is shorted, it's going to shut down, right? Because if we follow this circuit, it goes all the way across, but we have this, like I said, we have this resistor going off here, which is R834, which goes into this TL431 back over here. So that is part of the feedback network. I guarantee. I guarantee there's going to be other taps as well, like here, which is coming from you, it's DPMS. So there are other feedback taps coming from the monitor for the regulation, so I guarantee there's some of these. Anyways, so that's our issue. We don't have any voltage coming out probably i haven't plugged it in yet but i just want to double verify all this stuff right so this is what i do for troubleshooting so i think just to rule out the fact that this diode could be bad i'm going to remove it now i will warn you that sometimes simply heating this part up to remove it can clear the short sometimes it can create a short so don't let that red herring fall in your lap either just be aware when those situations arise. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to remove that diode. I'm going to take a look on the top. It's a fairly beefy diode and it looks like it's been warm. There's a 22 ohm resistor there, but there's nothing in this circuit that I can see that's 120 ohms. I do see this run cap is a little bit bloated, which is right here, right off that point. So that could be a problem. But again, I don't know. So, it's time to remove that resistor and see what we get. Or, not resistor, diode. Never mind, it's been a long day. So let's remove that diode. Because I want to verify if the diode's bad. Right? And my tip doesn't really work very well for this. It's already plugged. All right, push the diode out. Let's make sure I have the polarity correct so I can put it back in, right? Stripe faces towards the capacitor, so this is positive. Diode's removed. What do we get? How about that? Okay. It's a bad diode. Or it's a very low impedance diode. Nope, it's a bad diode. There you go. There's why the power supply is not working. This guy went bad. So now I gotta find the specs of this diode. So let's just for entertainment purposes. Um for entertainment purposes, this this uh, machine was, was giving me 120 ohms across the diode. Let's say if that diode was good and it had a 120 ohm, you know, resistor, low resistor in it. So let's do the math. If we look here, it says this is a 55 volt source. So if I go 55 volts divided by 120 ohms, that's 0.45. I'm sure I can do V squared over R, but so times 55 volts. That's 25 watts going through wherever that load is. It would have to be a big resistor. There's 25 watts there alone. That's how I know that just didn't seem right because I was looking at this. So what in the world in the secondary of that circuit can handle 25 watts? You tell me. It'd have to be a resistor like the size of this, those big ceramic resistors. It'd have to be, it'd, it'd have to be a cluster of these, essentially. So that's not gonna work. I, that, no, 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 no. Experience will tell you this. Theory of how this stuff works, like Ohm's Law I just did there, will tell you this. So that is defective. So there you go, there's our problem. Um, there's another one right here too, which looks like it has also been hot but it doesn't look so fun to get to. So the other thing I want to do is I want to check that capacitor.
make sure it's good. So I think I'm going to pull it. Pull it too. Because, you know, I don't really know. Not really working very well. This tool doesn't work that well with lead-free solder. You have to add, you know, this. There we go. Alright. So that is free. I want to pull that out and I want to check it. Because I don't like the way it looks. And actually it's got stupid hot snot on it too. So what I gotta do now is grab this guy to cut the hot snot off and pull it out. 100 volt, 100 microfarad. Okay, alright, well we know we have that. So we know this diode is basically shot. So now what I should do check that capacitor just to make sure that we're okay. Let's see, what do we get here? Can you see that? Yes, you can. All right, let's put you guy on here and you, let's see what we have. 90, it's a little low. 17 ohms ESR, that's kind of high, but it's also a 100 volt cap, so the ESR is a bit higher than I'd like. That's going to have to be replaced. That's done. And let's see, what is this? Sam Wah. Alright, so i got to put that on the list to be replaced. And, which makes sense, because there's a reason why I wanted to check that capacitor. And that's because that cap sat right next to this thing, because if you look at it, the heat will transfer and will dry these out. And you can kind of see on the top of it where the dome is a little bit bubbled. I mean, it's not like bad. I could still use this capacitor, but it's not as efficient as it once was. So that has to be replaced. So, all right, that's where we are right now. We have a lead. We know we're gonna have to do a bunch of solder work. So I need to try to see if I can source this part and get a new one so there we go that's where we are this might actually be the best investment I ever did was order this big bulk of diodes off of eBay years ago so I have that and then I have you so this is an FR305 which has the same specs because this is a 600 volt 3 amp fast recovery rectifier. The, uh, let's see, this is the 31DF series 6 for 600 volt. So, there we go. We got the same thing over here. This is probably a higher quality part, anyways. So, we're going to go with you. So, we're going to go here. And here. I'm going to elevate this off the board like it was originally. Because originally it had these little squishy things so it wouldn't fall through the board. So we're going to do something similar here. Because this thing gets hot, so I want to keep it raised out of the board. Just like that. So it won't fall down any more than it already is. So now we just got to solder you in there. eyeballing it and holding it in by manual force here. Okay. That's good. There. 
that should solve our problem. I wish I had the whole machine here to test it properly, but unfortunately I do not. So I'm just going to have to do this. Now the next problem is the only capacitor that I have that's big enough size is a 160 to 100, which I, I don't like these because these are not a quality brand. They're just not, but it's the only brands I have in these higher voltages. But to be honest, neither is this one. So, yeah. For now, I'll go with this just to make sure that we're good. I think what I want to do actually. One of these, let's do it like this one was done originally and just kind of like take this diode and go tweak like that and bend you up like so and just try to get this guy to fit in here. Yeah, I gotta get the right capacitor, but until I can, I gotta make sure this thing works. So get rid of this stupid hot snot. This, this stuff's in the way. All that stuff does is just cause problems, get in the way. Yeah, there we go. Not ideal, but I wish I had some good high quality Nichicons or United Chemicons or something like that for this. But unfortunately, I do not. But for now, this will work to know if I have any problems with other parts of the circuitry. So the only way to know is to just do it this way and then figure out something else when the time comes. And I forgot to empty the trash can, so I can't even put... Okay. So the next thing i got to do is I've got a plethora of resoldering work that I got to do on this board so this is probably going to be just an hour of resoldering this thing alone because it is bad so I'll probably end up cutting you forward past this point and then we can try to figure out a way to test this board because the issue the next issue we're going to have is I can't satisfy all these feedback conditions because I do not have the original board analog board. It'd be different if this was just a computer power supply, but unfortunately it is not. This is one of those weird ones like the uh, Apple network server stuff that has the weird sense lines and things like that. So, yeah. Anyway, you get the point. I'll bring you back when I get this done. Alright, so I think we're in a position now where we can actually test the voltage rail. So I have the new capacitor in there. I have the new diode in there. Now th that capacitor is not the best of quality but for the purposes of this video only I'm going to leave it in there. Um, I'll replace it later before it goes back to the owner. But for now this is what we got we can use to test this machine. So alright if my theory is correct this power supply should run all the time. Now, it might shut down because we don't have any of the uh, rails loaded or anything, but we'll see. Um, now, I did double check this. This pinout is not ATX. Do not plug an ATX in here because it is not the same thing. It's close, but no cigar. All right, so here goes nothing. No smoke. At least from this side, anyways. All right, so I gotta check the voltages. So 5.1 volts can be found over here. Hey, we have it. 5.1 volts. Now this 5.1 volts comes from over here, which is this buck converter, and this buck converter gets its power from right here. Yeah, we're good. All right, so this is a 55 volt source. This is the one that had the bad diode. It's a little low, but remember it's unloaded, so that's probably to be expected. 
So we have that. We have 77 volts here. That's right. So we're good. Everything's fine. There's 15 volts. It's a little low because we're, again, unloaded. 5 volts here. We're good there. There's the degauss, which we don't need. And then blah, 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 blah. All right. So here's this power supply or PC power signal, which goes up and around to about here. Which there's nothing there. And it's a one-way diode, so voltage has to flow in. Uh, which means this is probably not turned on. No, it's not. But this is running. So I think we are good there for now. Um, I do want to test this power supply, this section of the power supply. But I don't know if I can because I don't have the rest of the unit. But I will try. So what we're going to do is, just for the sake of this video, I think, and I'm going to just connect these in here somewhere, because um, I have a 12-volt supply there, and I have a ground. These are all grounds, so we're going to ground you from now. So that should be 12 volts. Okay. Don't do this at home, folks, unless you really know what you're doing. Please don't. Just If you have the original machine, just put it back in the original machine, and it should be fine. But I do not. So what we're going to do is we're going to chase this PC power on signal. Make sure it goes where it goes, and it does. It goes right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on a hunch and say that this is connected to 5 volts. Again, it might not run because we're not loaded. So that's our 5 volt supply, which is right here on that side of the inductor. Now, plug you back in. And we're going to do something really... Ooh, it tried to start. It did. So we actually... You know what? I might be alright. Let's try this anyway. No, it doesn't work. Hey, it was worth a shot. Let's try ground. Which is... Where's ground on this thing? I need a good ground point, which is oh, right here. Yeah, it, it didn't run. Uh, yeah, I didn't figure it would. Now, it was worth a shot, because none of these other conditions are satisfied. So, that's fine. But it, it is trying to come up. So, I think... Alright, so we're... We're draining off. It's probably safe to remove this. Alright, so there we go. Means if I plug this thing in again, it should um, try to fire up. Yep, it does. Yeah, it's coming up. So, it's coming up. So I think if I had the original machine, it would work fine. Everything's working. Everything is working as intended. Yeah, we're good. So, all right. There is that. And there we go. That was a quick little look at troubleshooting and repair of an E Machines E1 power supply. Got the new capacitor in over here, which I'm going to put a better one in. And then I got the uh, diode in right here. One thing, observation I do want to point out is this power supply appears to be Korean made. It's got all Korean parts in it. So I'm wondering if this is either an LG or a Samsung or something like that. I don't see a make or model anywhere on this board. Um, I'm sure it's probably around here somewhere. But if I were to hazard a guess, considering the time period that this thing came out, it's probably made by LG. Because LG was... OEMing out to so many manufacturers back then, like the Intel Dot Station, Apple, you know, so that's what I think this is. But yeah, we've got two independent power supplies. We have the one that runs all the time, and we have this one which is switched based on the signaling over here. And this just sends that out to the analog board, which then comes back and turns everything on. So that's as far as I can go with this for right now. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching.